Welcome everyone to That Kingsville Podcast, Meet the Candidates 2022. I'm your host, Dave Hunt. With me are Kevin Black and Steve Ianson and Gary Glass from Quantum Sound Productions. We're a local podcast that talks everything Kingsville from politics to things of interest. You can find us on any podcasting format platform like Spotify or Apple Podcasts or our YouTube channel. Tonight's event will be recorded and available on both. We'd like to thank the candidates and everyone here for attending the event. Thank you to the town of Kingsville for providing the venue and the non-perishable food items that were collected tonight will be provided to the Kingsville Food Bank to help with their efforts. The format of tonight's event, each school board trustee, council, deputy mayor, and mayoral candidate will be provided a three minute time, sorry, three minute time period for council, school board trustee, and deputy mayor candidates and mayor, mayoral candidates will have four minutes where they'll be able to present their election platform to the audience. There will be no question or answer period or debate taking place during this event. Each candidate will have an equal amount of time. When 30 seconds are remaining, Kevin will hold up a green card. At 15 seconds remaining, Kevin will hold up a yellow card. I'm glad we're not all colorblind, we got that? <laughs> at, at the completion of their time, Kevin will hold up a red card. There we are. <laughs> and the microphone. Will and then be... I might cut them off. Yeah, and then, we... and then, I might, then I might talk. Please, candidates, we do not want to have to cut you off. It's rather embarrassing. The order of uh, the speakers for the council, deputy mayor, and mayor were selected at random. But for the school board trustees, we're going by alphabetical order. And with that being said, school board trustees, for the Greater Essex County School Board, English Public School Board Trustee, could I have Julia Burgess to the stage, please? Good evening, I'm Julia Burgess and I love kids and I care deeply that they get the best schools can offer and that the public purse can manage. I believe that quality public education is the cornerstone of a civil society and leads to apprenticeships, college, university, the workplace, athletic achievement, better health, and lifelong learning. All children and youth deserve it, regardless of faith or abilities, even those kids without parents, but are in our care. And whether you're new to this area or a member of the local Caldwell First Nation, who knows the teachings from this land, you know what happens in the name of public education matters deeply. 70% of folks, of you, who pay for schools don't have kids in schools. But you want to know how I'll protect the $557 million annual budget that we govern. Real estate agents know that the quality of our present school and the $60 million state-of-the-art facility, like the new one on Jasperson in construction, have an impact. Et pour les parents qui choisissaient le programme d'immersion ou l'intensif, merci bien pour choisissez notre conseil scolaire. It's a strategic priority to gather all the voices, parents, guardians, students, staff, administrators, colleagues, and our banker, the Minister of Education. We have great representatives of all these voices on our committees and rely on that work to advise the board. Student voice, if we don't listen to the kids we serve, we won't know how well they're doing. Publicly elected trustees are the only officials whose duty in law is the achievement and well-being of children. I have a vulnerable sector police clearance because I believe that every elected official should have one, especially if you're around kids. Vote for me, Julia Burgess, because it gives you a provincial strong voice as I serve on the provincial policy team and on the provincial board of directors at the Ontario Public School Board Association, representing five boards and the John McGivney Children uh, School Authority. We discuss and vote on issues like mental health, recent learning losses, labor relations, very important right now, unions contracted, uh, contracts expired on August 31st. I'm a lover of the arts. I have no conflicts of interest on anything. I'm nerdy about math and science and tech shops. I have five years at the University of Windsor in engineering and science, handy when you're 
discussing ventilation during a pandemic. It's handy with school design, analysis of budgets for green technology, etc. I have a tender heart for those who are underserviced. I'm retired from a career of sales and management. Next four years, we're going to be selling Jack Minor, Kingsville Public Migration Hall, and Kingsville High, as well as other properties. Choose me because I've done it before as chair of the board and as a member. At the end of the day, I want public lands in the right hands, and Thank it'll you. honor our legacy. Thank, Thank you. you. And now, Sherry Ducedar. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Sherry Ducedar. I am running for public school board trustee in the town of Kingsville and in the town of Essex. Um, two questions I typically get when I tell people that I'm running for this is the first one, how do you say your name? Um, no one seems to understand the spelling of it, perfectly understood. So it's de cedar, cedar at the end, much like the cedar tree. The second question I usually get is, why do you wanna run? Um, this is a very common question. So I have served on the Committee of Adjustment for both the town of Essex and the town of Amherstburg um, as a member. This has provided me a lot of experience utilizing strong communication in an open meeting forum, making decisions based on legislation, policies, and procedures. Appointed members of this committee must have a commitment to attend monthly meetings, have an understanding of zoning bylaws, the official plan, other relevant policies. They must contribute time, knowledge, skill, and expertise to fulfill the committee's mandate. Running for public school board trustee would encompass many of these same requirements. All schools for me um, within the Essex and Kingsville area are all painted with the same brush. And what I mean by that is my children went to school in Amherstburg. So they went from JK to high school, all in Amherstburg. So for me, all the schools that I would represent, I have no biases, no preference, no alliances. Um, I would be a voice for all the parents at all schools within Essex and Kingsville. Um, lastly, I would just like to say that I have been employed with the City of Windsor for over 21 years. So being employed there, this has provided me service to the community. I've gained knowledge of political structures. I believe this has somewhat prepared me for the next step. Um, I would just like to be a voice for the parents and the children within Essex and Kingsville. Lastly, I think I'm almost out of time, but I just wanted to mention that it is very wonderful to see this many people here in the crowd today. This just shows a very strong sense of community and that's very important in today's day and age. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, and finally, from the Greater Essex County District School Board English Public, David Keller. Hi, I'm David Keller. I'm running for the position of trustee for the Greater Essex County School Board. I have a lifetime resident of Harrow. <clears throat> I've been married for 38 years to my wife, Suzanne. I have two sons that uh, went to the school, Greater Essex County District School Board. Uh, I went to school in Harrow. I apprenticed as a mechanic in my father's car dealership and got my mechanic's license. I worked in the family business in 2010, then decided to get my teaching certificate, and I went to the University of Western Ontario and graduated in 13. I currently run a small business repairing classic cars. My hobbies are woodworking and, and cars. I like cars a lot. <laughs> I worked at the Greater Essex County District School Board as an occasional transportation technology teacher for 10 years. I worked in all the local schools, did long terms. And when COVID hit, uh, I didn't have a permanent position, so I decided to retire from the board. And I decided to run for the position because I miss being involved with the school system. As an educator, I had firsthand experience within the schools and was able to see some of the challenges that, uh, uh, that the teachers and the students face. I would like to be a part of finding the solutions there to these challenges. 
I usually prefer to work behind the scenes and stay out of the spotlight, but I've decided to step out of my comfort zone and for the good of the community. And being a self-employed person, I have the time and the flexibility in my schedule to devote the time needed to be a trustee. I'm able to make my own hours and available as needed. And if you contact me, I will get back to you. My experience in a small business, business owner is varied at, with communication, dealing with customers, and I've had co-op students and apprentices and a various tasks. And uh, I've been asked this question a few times and, uh, about diversity and equality in the school board. And I believe that's one of the biggest upcoming challenges for the greater district at Essex County District School Board and being and be supporting human rights initiatives with regards to equality, diversity, and inclusion. We, we need to work towards treating people as equals. And as community transitions to the new school to con con uh, consolidate three schools, I think there's a need for new blood and be part of these decisions. And thank you for your time. That away. Yeah, not, we don't want a trip hazard here tonight. Thank you, David. Running for Windsor Essex Catholic District School Board English Catholic, Mary Demena. Good evening, everyone. And it's so nice to see so many people here this evening, especially after what we've been through with COVID and not being able to gather. So it's very nice to see everyone here. I'm Mary Demena, and I'm uh, seeking re-election for the position of Catholic School Board Trustee. My area is Kingsville, Leamington, Essex, Harrow, and Pelee Island. I have 52 years experience in Catholic education. I was a teacher for 33 years for the board, and I have 19 years as a trustee. The education we provide our students must continue to improve, to find new ways to meet their needs in an ever-changing world. Give our students the support they require achieving their goals, especially after the two and a half years we have been through with COVID. There are issues we need to address. Student achievement, faith formation, mental health, and special education. We need to know each student, guide them towards pathways that best work for them in an environment in, that is positive and welcoming. In the past, I have served the community with integrity, insight, commitment. I respectfully ask for your vote on October 24th, 2000, on October 24th, 2022. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Now the candidates running for counselor in the town of Kingsville, Barry Wilson. Thank you. Hello, Kingsville. I wish to thank everyone here for the opportunity to speak with you. I'm Barry Wilson and Kingsville is home for my family, my wife Beth, and our son Cullen. Beth grew up in Cottom where the Miller family has farmed since 1933. While I was raised just outside of the town of Essex, going to the University of Windsor and graduating with an honors business administration degree. And since then, working as an advisor and an accountant to many families, entrepreneurs, and small business. During this time, I've proudly served my community in various roles. I consider it an honor to do so. I believe I can contribute further as a member on council. Using the skills, experience, and relationships that I've developed over my career, I will work together with the citizens, administration, and leaders of Kingsville to make the most of the opportunities before us. It is a vital time for our community we are, in the, we are amid one of the largest economic developments ever seen in Windsor and Essex County. Over the next three to five years, we're going to see the completion of the Gordie Howe Bridge, building of new regional hospital, new manufacturing plants for batteries and EVs, a completed expanded Highway 3 leading right to Kingsville, and a new K-12 school. 
For Windsor and Essex, this will mean creation of more than 10,000 jobs, hundreds of families, families moving this area, and they'll be looking to Kingsville. Are we ready for this? Now's the time for leadership and vision to guide, shape, and maintain our communities, our vibrant communities. As a member of council, I will leverage the strong relationships I've built with local members of government to access every resource available from the federal and provincial levels. Pursue new initiatives and programs available for first time home buyers, like the one that was announced on August the 30th. Supporting the building of new roads and streets to reduce congestion and save our residents time. Advocating for police, mental health and emergency services for safe and healthy communities. A continued commitment to building infrastructure, such as improved internet services, as an increasing number of our residents are working from home, saving them time and money for commuting and softening our footprint on the environment. We will support small business or I'll support small business, promote tourism and seek to improve, make improvements to existing parks, trails, waterways and beaches to improve our lifestyle options, healthy lifestyle options and a better quality of life. I believe we can all work together in growing a Kingsville that we all can be proud of. On election day and in the mail, your ballots, look for W and vote for Wilson for Kingsville Council. Thank you, Barry. Michael Glass. Good evening. Thank you to the guys at the Kingsville Pod, that Kingsville podcast for arranging this event. And thanks to everybody for being here. My name is Michael Glass and I'm running for council for our beautiful community of Kingsville. I'm proud to be the fourth generation of the Glass family to call Kingsville home. And I'm, I'm grateful that my wife Ann and I are able to raise our three girls here. My love for our community is what motivates me to run for city or for Kingsville Council. And I'm poised to represent the residents and business owners of this amazing community with a common sense approach. I will advocate for a formal plan for short and long-term growth of our community. We all desire, everybody I've talked to here tonight, desires to keep Kingsville beautiful. And we can obtain this with a vision and a plan for responsible growth. A plan for our future residential, business, and agricultural developments. A plan that protects our heritage buildings, our waterfront, and ensures we have sufficient parks and green spaces for future. A formal plan to address traffic flow is in the works, and as your counselor, I will work diligently to explore options to reroute truck traffic away from the downtown core and ease the flow of traffic on Main Street while ensuring we have increased access to bike paths and multi-use paths. I will make certain that our tax dollars are not wasted, but effectively being spent where needed. We need our elected representatives to be not only fiscally responsible, but also fiscally transparent. Every taxpayer in our community should know where their dollars are being spent. During these high inflation times, tough decisions will need to be made, and I'm prepared to stand up and make those decisions. With increased cost due to the pandemic, and with inflationary pressure being felt by all of us, it will be my priority to make it easier and more affordable to live here, raise a family here, and retire here. I intend to work with and encourage our local public boards and, and committees to provide improved access to health care for those suffer suffering with mental illness. Although it's been a major issue for years, it's been amplified during the past few years of living through the pandemic and government lockdowns. Kingsville needs to provide additional resources for those individuals and families in our community struggling with mental illness. I want to work to build, towards building a community which is based on promoting and defending family values, faith, respect, and equality. It's time to put the two and a, put behind us the past two and a half years and through mutual respect for one another, work to bring our community closer together. I'm excited for and I look forward to the future here in Kingsville. I know that we can keep Kingsville beautiful if we move forward with a solid plan in place. Thanks to all of your support. I look forward to the challenge and if given the opportunity, I will, I will be your voice at the table. Thanks. Thank you, Michael. Les McDonald.
Hi, Kingsville. Uh, thanks for uh, putting this together. It's nice to see this incredible crowd here. Uh, people are so involved in the community. And, uh, and that's been like that since I moved here. If you don't know who Les McDonald is, uh, I've been pretty involved on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, I've been volunteering my time and becoming involved in social issues here in Kingsville for quite a few years now. Uh, and I never actually had the intention to run for council, but I have a rear view mirror. Uh, I've, I've been around, I lived in Squamish. Uh, about six years ago, they were going through the exact same growing pains we're going through right now. They were a small logging town. They were sort of off the map and all of a sudden everybody realized how incredible they were and uh, developers and uh, investors came in from all over, real estate prices took off. It's, it's like deja vu. So I bring that perspective with me. I've lived here for four and a half years, so I'm not born and raised here, but my wife and her family are from the county, her parents live on the lake. And the reason we moved to, to Kingsville is because we have two young children and we thought this was the perfect place to raise our family and boy, were we right. Uh, so I'll continue to be involved uh, on YouTube. I, I like to speak through video, it's my language. I'm a video producer. Uh, so uh, if you elect me to be on council, uh, I'll be very transparent and I'm gonna try to involve the community uh, through various methods like that. So uh, I, I think anyone who knows me knows how much I love Kingsville. Uh, and I think we have some challenges in front of us and some opportunities, big time. Um, you know what my, my motto is, this is our town and this is our future. I know we all feel like we've been a little blindsided at times about how fast things have been happening here, but my commitment, even if I'm not elected, is to help us build our vision of ourselves for Kingsville. All right, we know who we are, we know what we wanna keep and we can grow absolutely and we can keep our character. We can keep our values and we can still be Kingsville. Uh, People are coming to me all the time telling me and some of the main issues that, that I feel very strongly about that obviously other people do uh, is uh, our town, our future. We should be in control of our development uh, and, and maintain our small town feel. No matter how much we grow, we can still be Kingsville. Uh, I believe we have to work really hard on affordable housing and I've seen it happen in other, in other places. Uh, I lived in Banff. Uh, they started a, um, an amazing project where they built 176 homes and created opportunities for first time home buyers. I'd like to work on that here in Kingsville. It's not a solution for everybody, but we're gonna work on that because people that, that made this town, that live here and grew up here, deserve to stay here. We wanna keep our families here. Um, Why well, vote for Les McDonald? I'm seeing the cards pop up. I'm very passionate about what I do and I think anyone who's seen me knows that. I'm committed. Uh, Kingsville is my home for life and I work at home, so I've got the time and the energy to put the effort that and this town time. deserves. So uh, thank anyways, you thanks much, a lot. Thank I'm you Les so much. And, uh, thank you. Next we have Brandon Stanley. Oh, I'd be lying if I told you I wasn't nervous right now. It was uh, your conversations tonight that gave me the strength to come up here and speak to you. Um, as you all know, speaking in front of public is a, a pretty tough thing for a lot of people. But being able to talk to you guys tonight and hear what you guys have as passion, community, drive in this area has given me the strength to continue on and be here in front of you. I'm from a small town up north. I'm not from around here. I've only been here for about three years. And with that, the only thing I'm bringing I feel to here is the same as what Les was just talking about, which is I had a small town that was beautiful. It was just like Harrow. It's from Tottenham, Ontario. And we had a lot of influx of Torontonians come to us and start growing that town. And I don't think anything was wrong with that, but it was the way that the town approached it. They started creating restrictions. They started saying, you can't do this here. You can't do that there. And what ended up happening is we restricted the town in the way that we wanted it to grow. And I think that this town has an uh, opportunity where I say that we're 10 years away from what happened there to stay, start saying, this is what we want to see. This is how we want to see our town grow. Tell the developers, tell the people that are around here, this is what we want to become. And I think that that's where I stand on a lot of the things that I believe in. I believe that we should have a vision of what we want to see this town become. I'm not saying I'm the best counselor here. I remember when I first put my name in, there was only three people. 
And I just thought that it'd be great to be part of that communication and conversation. But now that I see that there's a bunch of different counselors out there that are go going about the same ideas, the same kind of passion that I had, that I wanted to see and contribute to this community, I don't think that there's gonna be many bad choices in this room. I think that we're all on the same page here. I think that we can all work together and I think that we all wanna see this community grow in a way that we can all get behind. If you wanna find out more about me, I have a website. I'm public on all my social media. I have been for decades. You can go to brandonstanley.ca, look me up about who I am, what the issues are I believe are, and I also have all the candidate information on there too. So if you wanna find out about our candidates, go ahead to the website and check them out as well. You're not gonna make a bad decision by being informed. And that's where I stand. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. Scott Collier, please. Thank you very much, everybody, for attending. This is a fantastic turnout, way better than I expected, and that's a tribute to how much all of you care about this community. Again, my name is Scott Collier. I'm here with my beautiful wife, Jody Brush. Some of you know her as Jody Bernath. And between us, we have eight children and two grandchildren. And so pretty big family and lots of uh, relatives in the area and a long history within the community. Ultimately, I wanna to talk to you to, tonight about belief. Belief in our families, belief in our community, belief in what we can potentially become. Uh, and, and what we've already accomplished has, has been incredible in this community. And I know we can do even more. I know that's easy to say for politicians the reality with any politician is when they say one thing and do something else, believe what they do, not what they say. We have witnessed constant political turmoil, whether it's the United States recently, our federal government, provincial government. At the end of the day, uh, our neighboring communities have faced a couple decades of turmoil. And so that's a tribute to Nelson Santos leadership and the leadership of the incumbents that are here running again tonight, that Kingsville can be very proud of the representation that we've had. Now, at the end of the day, um, and Brandon, by the way, you did a fantastic job. For most people, this is a difficult spot to be in. There was a study that showed that the fourth greatest fear of people is vicious large dogs. The third biggest fear is airplane flight. The second biggest is dying. And the biggest fear is being up here public speaking. <laughs> so the average person would rather die in a plane crash while getting bit by a rabid dog than be doing what all of the people here are volunteering. So all of us have strengths and weaknesses, successes, a lot of successes, but also failures. It's not how far we fall in life, it's how high we bounce that counts. And inevitably, you've got a tough choice to choose amongst a lot of candidates, but that's a sign of how much all these people care. And nobody's here doing it for the money, right? The reality is you could work at Taco Bell and make more money. You're not doing it for those reasons, you're doing it because you care about our community. So why would you consider me? Maybe 22 years in financial services and leading large financial organizations. Maybe it's 20 years in retail management and how I can help grow the business community. Maybe it's the work I did launching Kingsville Neighbors Magazine for the community and to support local families and local businesses. Maybe it's the 4,000 plus hours of community service I've dedicated to service above self. That's your time, Scott. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you. God bless. I think I'd rather publicly speak than die in a plane crash, but okay, that's just me. Anyway, Larry Patterson. Good evening. I'd like to thank everyone who took time out of their busy schedules to attend Meet the Candidates Night and help support our local food bank. My name is Larry Patterson, and I'm again asking for your support for re-election as counselor for the town of Kingsville. I'm a resident of our community for over 64 years, 
past and present Pattersons have resided in Kingsville for over the past 90 years. I've been happily married to my wife Shelley for 46 years in a row. We have two married sons and four grandchildren. I worked in the municipality of Kingsville for over 40 years, 15 years at Peterson Springs, 25 years combined service working for the town of Kingsville while obtaining three provincial licenses. Community service is very important to me. I volunteered for many local service groups while also serving as a Gospel North firefighter, coached many local sports teams. Some, but not all of the local committees I volunteer to serve on are Gospel North Communication, Legion of State Board of Directors, Kingsville Military Museum. As counselor, I've served on the following committees, Essex Region Conservation, Kingsville Accessibility, Union Water, Kingsville Municipal Police Board, Kingsville Municipal Drainage, just to name a few. As your counselor, some of the concerns from the residents that I've been brought to my attention while I've been campaigning this year have been reduce traffic flow on Main Street, Division, Queen, Lansdowne, update our infrastructure, reduce building on Main Street, supply attainable homes, senior housing, but not in my backyard, say no to more greenhouses, say no to migrant housing in my neighborhoods, restrict heights on new buildings, Protect our lakefront views from high-rise condos or apartments. Provide more green space and bike lanes. Clean and continue dredging our beaches for safe quality. Revamp our marina, new docks, new electrical. Purchase a school property to build a new town hall, police station, build rental housing. Have all closed session meetings open to the public. And most importantly, keep our taxes lower with no increases. Anyone can stand up here and make promises, but it takes a team working together with management to prioritize these projects. In fact, legislation prohibits council to act on some of these requests. The next four years will be very busy, not only for council, but also our staff. As a retiree, I had the time and dedication to work for you. Thank you. Good luck to all my fellow candidates. And I hope. Hey, thank you, Larry. Willie Fittler. Good evening, everyone. My name is Willie Fittler, and I'm running for council. I've lived in Kingsville for the past 53 years, and my wife, Margaret, born in Kingsville, has lived her entire life in this area. We have six children between us and 10 grandchildren. It's a handful. My brothers and I have had businesses and owned properties in all corners of the county. My career choices and life experiences have provided me with a comprehensive knowledge base and proven skill set to take on the challenges of the position. They include President of the Essex South PCSA Association, Vice President of the Essex County Ratepayers Association, President and Owner of Sunburst Canning Limited, President and Owner of Vine Ripe Farms Limited, President and Owner of Custodian Holdings Kingswood Limited, Office Manager of Primo Foods Limited, and Consultant for Price Waterhouse Limited, Treasurer of Kingswood First Lutheran Church, Treasurer of Windsor Temple Baptist Church, owner of Sunburst Electric, and general manager and president of Beach Grove Foods Limited. At present, I'm semi-retired, but still maintain my work as a part-time consultant. These roles have also provided me with a unique and first-hand perspective of the potential and evolving needs of this area and its residents. We need jobs, an influx of tourist trade, local mental health care, support for established and future businesses, and through effective marketing, recognition of the uniqueness of our area and its many talented residents. The challenge is going to be weaving our needs and assets together in order to evolve in a manner that will create resolutions to our issues 
without losing the unique distinctiveness of our communities. Of course, we need to involve, but we can't do it blindly, nor at the expense of what we already have. The planning for our communities must be stabilized with common sense and achieved by all of us working together. It's with a sense of responsibility, commitment, and enthusiasm that I look forward to using my managerial expertise, my political understanding, and pride of community to help our combined populations successfully achieve these ends. Thank you very much. Thank you, Willie. Michael Del Ciencio. Hey, Kingsville. Boy, have we heard from some great speakers here tonight. I hope you guys are getting excited about your options coming up. As for myself, my name is Michael Del Ciencio. I am a third generation family farmer. I, my farm is located in uh, the Ruthven area, just around the corner from Colasani's. And many of you might remember Pioneer Fruits and Vegetables. That was a fantastic fruit stand that my parents um, started. And that was where I first um, began working and learning the values of hard work and sacrifice that um, anybody, but any small business, and I still hold those true to myself. And eventually I left for school and um, I went to Guelph, the University of Guelph and Harris Institute for the Arts. And I learned a valuable experience living in the city, but ultimately my need for a more grounded lifestyle and to raise a family brought me back to Kingsville in the early 2000s. And to see the, the growth that Kingsville has had in the last 20 years is fantastic. And to be on this stage right now is quite invigorating to think that I can help Kingsville take that next level of growth through, I believe, through proper respect, communication, and understanding, not only from council to the residents, but also from council to industry. There is a plethora of opportunities where we can all gain and learn a substantial amount in the process. Um, as for myself, I was, um, I feel like I bring uh, critical thinking and objectivity to all situations. I feel looking at a holistic, at problems holistically to solve issues is necessary. And I don't necessarily claim to have all the answers, but I feel like I'm pretty damn good at asking the right questions. And I think that's the first step into actually solving questions or solving issues. Um, also, myself, I, I do enjoy stepping out of my comfort zone, embracing challenges, hence why I'm here. And I feel like I am in my prime as a man, as a father, to take on this challenge and put my, my vision of merging industry and community into one and helping you all in the process. I enjoy uh, philosophy, music, um, and I've been going around uh, door to door knocking and having brief interactions with all of you. And it's been spectacular. And I've enjoyed seeing the smiles opening up. And I can tell that the community heart is there. And no matter what happens in our, in our, in our town, where we're headed, if we keep that community spirit and those smiles when we open the door, ultimately that can solve a lot of our problems. And I would very much appreciate your vote. And I thank you for your time. Thank you, Michael. Debbie Jarvis Shossi. Hi, everyone. I'm Debbie Jarvis Chossie. I'm a mom, grandma, and spouse. I've lived in Kingsville for 46 years. I'm a longtime resident. I work at a local grocery store, a couple of grocery stores in town for over 35 years. I'm passionate about Kingsville and I'm here for the people. I have volunteered at our local legion for 35 years, the tornado relief event at Collis Antis in 2010, and I've gone door to door for heart and stroke. I like the small town feel and I want to keep that for my grandkids to grow up in. I'm outgoing, unbiased, honest, and for the people. 
I have no affiliations with any other candidates. Some issues I will bring to the table are affordable housing. I, it would be great if we could fix this, but I'm not sure there's much we can do at the municipal level. I would support it, whatever we can work on with that. Uh, Lakeside Park Pavilion here, I think it's uh, needing some fixing up. When we look out the window, it's a lakefront view, but you can't really see the lake. I think that needs to be worked on. I'd like to see more mental health resources in our, our county to help deal with the growing impact of mental health in our area and the whole county. Um, I would support and promote that as well. It is my platform to be a voice at the table for all constituents of Kingsville, to give an objective view of the realities I know exist in our town being a resident for 46 years. I am not going to give an uninformed answer as I don't know all the policies as I am not on the council yet. But what I can say is I will be for the people and I will bring to the table what the people want. Thanks for attending tonight and make your vote count on October 24th. Thank you, Debbie. Gideon Spivak. Good evening. Uh, it's great to see uh, all of our candidates out tonight, and it's great to see all of you, uh, the residents of our great municipality. Uh, we have so many fresh faces running for election this year, and I'm extremely honored to be part of this class of excellent candidates. Uh, now, to introduce myself to all of you here tonight, uh, my name is Gideon Spivak, and I want to be your next Kingsville Councillor. Um, I was born and raised here in the town of Kingsville uh, by my two wonderful parents, over there, um, wherever they are. <laughs> uh, last year, I studied political science at the University of Toronto uh, before coming home, uh, seeking something a little bit different for myself. Uh, I've always felt a call to service uh, from a young age. Uh, my grandmother, Edith Bachmeyer, she's over there. Uh, she always told me I'd either be a lawyer or a politician, and uh, I'm sure maybe right on one count so far. Uh, I joined the Columbian Squires here in town at the age of 10 and participated actively uh, by volunteering at and hosting many events uh, and by serving on the uh, executive vote for over two years. Uh, when I turned 18, I joined our local Knights of Columbus Council 8233, uh, seeking to continue my community service in my adult years. I sit on the council executive, uh, which is something I consider to be a great honor. Uh, when I was 12 years old, uh, I had quite the unique opportunity. I was chosen out of thousands of applicants across the province to serve as a page in Ontario's provincial legislature at Queen's Park. Um, there, my life changed forever. Uh, I had the opportunity to meet so many wonderful people that were so dedicated to the community service. Uh, and then I met the politicians too. Uh, <laughs> uh, jokes aside, I came back a changed person and my interest in politics really began from there. Uh, but I want to speak about us. I want to speak about our town. We've changed quite a lot. Uh, the building we're gathered in today, uh, sorry, uh, some folks love change. Um, some people uh, find it difficult to handle. Uh, the truth is, is that change is really just inevitable. Uh, the thing about change though is this. Uh, I served as a representative on the Main Street Development Committee uh, that was started by uh, Mr. Young. And through this experience, I learned that we as residents can have a say in the change we will see. And that is why I launched my campaign. I want you to have a say. I want you to feel represented, to feel heard. We need to formulate a plan for future development, and we need to make that plan with the interests of our town in mind. The possibilities are truly endless. We can retain our small town charm while building for future generations, and we can do this while keeping your taxes at some of the lowest rates in the province. The balance of these two ideas, I will make my top priority if I'm elected to serve on council. There will be tough decisions to make, and I'm ready to make those decisions on day one but I will always consider your output and I will input and I will always try to get back with a thoughtful response as soon as I can. You deserve nothing less as taxpayers in the town of Kingsville. It would be the honor of my life to serve as one of your counselors. And if I make one promise during this campaign, it is that if I am elected, I will serve you with everything that I am and this experience will transform me into everything that I am supposed to be. Thank you and have a great night. Thank you, Gideon. Tim Seach. Good evening, everyone. 
I am so encouraged as a prospective counselor to see a turnout like this. I think you deserve to give yourselves a round of applause. Hello, my name is Tim Seach, and I'm asking for your vote for Kingsville Council. First, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I was born in Leamington, so don't hold that against me. And I've been married to my high school sweetheart for the past 45 years and lived in Kingsville for the last 22 years. I recently retired from 45 years in banking, and I'm looking forward to putting my years of financial experience to work for the people of Kingsville. Going door to door and speaking to people for the last couple of weeks, I'm often asked, what is your platform? Well, I get raised eyebrows when I say, I have no platform. And I see some here right now. In my banking career, I learned that in order to be effective, I had to be a good listener. I had to ask good questions. And I had to gather all the facts before I made a decision. That's what I want to do for the people of Kingsville, to listen to all sides of an issue, to gather the facts and understand the concerns of the people of Kingsville, and to be an effective counselor for the people of Kingsville. Having said that, I do have some core values that I think are fundamental to good government. They are fiscal responsibility. We need to make sure that your money is well spent. Transparency. We need to provide the rationale behind the decisions we make at Council. And accountability. Right or wrong, we need to stand behind our decisions. If this resonates with you, I'm asking that when you get your ballot in the mail, that you would vote for me, Tim Seach, for Kingsville Council. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Tony Gaffin. I cannot express how good it is to be in person. My sincerest thanks to everyone that has worked to organize this evening and for everyone that has taken time in their busy schedules to educate themselves to join us this evening. Let's be honest. We are all here because we love Kingsville and wish to see Kingsville continue to thrive. My name is Tony Gaffin. I was born and raised in Kingsville. My wife, Laura, and I have four children and have enjoyed our three grandchildren. I have been a self-employed barber at Gaffin's Apex Barbershop for the last 35 years, and we are now a fourth generation business and have been serving Kingsville for over 68 years. We have come through perhaps one of the most challenging seasons this community has faced. This is my second term on council, and I am so proud to be a part of a team that has dedicated to leading in uncertain times. And it wasn't easy, but my heart bleeds Kingsville, and each of you represent a piece of the best community. It has been my honor to listen to, work for, advocate alongside of you. Having worked in this position for the past eight years, I hope you have found me trustworthy and reliable. I intentionally make myself available to not only listen to your concerns, but work with administration, boards, committees, or agencies to hopefully bring resolution. My experience include tourism and economic development, BIA, Union Water, Parks and Rec, Striking Committee, Personnel Committee, Animal Control, Court of Appeals, Metawa's Fundraising Committee, and one that's closest to my heart, Fantasy Lights. I have chaired and co-chaired some of these committees as well, and I also have been an alternate on Essex County Council for the past four years, advocating for our municipality at a region level. Volunteering has continually been very important as a citizenship of this community. It is a pleasure to serve. I have been involved in community dinners, breakfast programs, and leading youth groups at my church. I'm also a member of the Neighborhood Charitable Alliance and have volunteered in many events and festivals. My platform has always been your platform. I have worked hard to listen to your concerns. If it's priority to you, it's a priority to me. Kingsville has its small town feel because each one of us is a close knit community. It makes us so unique and inviting and each of your voices is incredibly important to me. Infrastructure, waterfront, traffic, greenhouses, development are all issues that we have been working hard to further improve Kingsville. This is a work in progress because unfortunately, this job doesn't come with a magic wand. Here's the bottom line. I am not afraid to make hard decisions. Does it sometimes make me not popular? Absolutely. Working for the greater good is never easy and it never has been. But I will continue to work for you. 
I will weigh my decisions very carefully, study all angles of the situation, and base my decision on the benefit of the majority. I'm here to talk about any and all of my decisions I've made. Talk to me. I'm here for you. Your voice matters. Thank you, Tony. Sherry Lowry. Lucky number 13. <laughs> I have called Kingsville home all my life. I've been a board member for the Kingsville Music Society and the Jack Minor Bird Sanctuary. I sat on the Tourism and Economic Development Committee. I'm a member of Women United. I'm the president of a local women's hockey league, and I sit on a negotiating team to bargain our contract. I want lots of recreational opportunities to enjoy, whether that is sports, entertainment, social or arts and culture. I want Kingsville to be a destination. I can see the shift in marketing to Canada's most Southern town because that is something we can sell. I believe that Kingsville needs a plan, a visual. I understand that we have an official plan, but I want an actual 3D model that shows us where we will be in five, 10 and 20 years. What will Kingsville look like for my kids? I want to be a part of the planning to what happens with the schools that I attended and graduated from. But I know what you want to know about is traffic, development, affordable housing, greenhouses, and the waterfront. I will be incredibly honest with you. I can't solve any of these problems on my own. But what I can do is represent my constituents. I can keep connected with the people that vote me here and with those that don't. My role is to bring forward your individual concerns, having you know that I will take up that issue and find an answer. I am not an expert on any of these topics, but I can listen to the experts, the traffic engineers, the planners, the architects. I can question reports. I can view alternatives. I can collaborate and communicate. I am educated. I am not afraid of research. I love to ask lots of questions. And at the end of the day, I will make incredibly hard decisions and know that I will not always be loved. I work for the University of Windsor, and this is a lot like picking a university. I tell my students all the time to find the one that fits them, the one that feels right. If I resonate with you, great, send a vote my way. But come October 24th, all I ask is whoever gets voted, you respect them. None of us are here to be ridiculed on Facebook. We are not out to make you angry. We signed up for a job in public service because we care. And we truly think we can bring something to the table for the people we speak on behalf of. To end my time here today, I will say that Jack Minor Public School had it right on its sign to start the school year. This year be the voice of kindness and positivity. We are teaching it to our kids. We need to take a lesson in, in on ourselves. Vote for Sherry. Thank you, Sherry. Thomas Newfeld. Can you hear me in the back? I didn't start yet. Did you start? Yeah, you started. All right, good evening everybody and <laughs> thanks for coming tonight. I'd like to begin with a story. One day, an elephant saw a hummingbird laying on its back with its tiny feet in the air. What are you doing? Asked the elephant. The hummingbird replied, I heard that the sky might fall today, so I am ready to help hold it up. The elephant laughed. Do you really think those tiny feet could help hold up the sky? The hummingbird kept its feet in the air, intent on his purpose, and replied, not alone, but each must do what he can, and this is what I can do. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Thomas Neufeld, and that old proverb is an excellent example of how I plan to keep working for you. Like the little hummingbird, I am ready to help where I can. I was first elected to council in 2014 and then re-elected in 2018. Prior to that, I served on several committees of council, and was a regular audience member since 2008. 
I'm extremely proud and honored to have been chosen to be your voice for the last eight years, and I realize there is more work to be done. Over the next four years, I will remain focused on providing a mix of housing options for our seniors and first-time homebuyers. I will continue to support our farmers, advocating that our prime agricultural land should be protected. I will continue to support our business community, helping to create an environment that promotes economic development. I will continue to push for meaningful investments in our marina and public waterfront, giving the moniker Kingsville on the Lake some legitimacy. I will continue to champion environmental stewardship with help from like-minded community partners. I will continue to support recreational, social, and mental health initiatives so that we can continue to have choices for an active and healthy lifestyle. And above all else, I will continue to advocate for keeping our taxes low. Like those tiny little legs of the hummingbird, it is the little things that when done together have the greatest impact on our quality of life. Protection for pollinators, a bike lane, a dance, a parade, a concert, a mailbox to Santa, a bocce court, a skating pond, a horseshoe pit, a walking trail, a friendly hello from a stranger, a floral display, a train ride, I could go on. It's those little things, that small town feel, that quality of life that attracts new visitors and is so valued by our residents. It's those little things that make Kingsville an awesome place to be. Like the little hummingbird, I cannot do it alone. I will need your help. Kingsville needs your help. Together, we can help hold up the sky. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thomas. Those were your candidates for town councilor for the town of Kingsville. Now for the position of deputy mayor, Kimberly DeYoung. Thank you, good evening. Uh, I do wanna thank the Kingsville podcast, the town of Kingsville, all my fellow candidates, and of course, everyone here tonight for coming out and making this possible. Three minutes is not long enough, and I hope you reach out to me so that we can have a discussion about the issues that are most important to you. Nonetheless, here we are. My name is Kimberly DeYoung, and I'm seeking your support to be Kingsville's next deputy mayor. When I first ran for council, I pledged to improve the transparency and the accountability of what happens at the council table. My very first motion was for us to have our council meetings live streamed and recorded so you could watch from the comfort of your home, but also so there is a record of what your council members say and how they vote. I furthered that pledge by asking for a full costing of the Grovedale. While I was campaigning, people were asking me, how were these decisions made and how much over budget did this building go? And I couldn't find this information available in the public record. Once selected, I was able to get it from administration and I made it available to the public. If you're interested, it's on my website, kingsvillekim.com. Shortly after being elected, I realized that our official plan is severely out of date. Its vagueness puts us in a weak position to direct growth and to save the heritage that we have remaining. It's one of the key reasons that I came up with the Main Street Development Committee. This committee came up with recommendations for heritage, traffic, uh, zoning, and urban design. And we're just starting to see some of those recommendations be implemented, uh, such as with the recent approval of our Comprehensive Transportation Master Plan. There's still so much work to do on that file. These are just a few of the issues that I've addressed and dealt with in my time on council. But now I'm seeking a higher seat, and you may be wondering, why am I running for deputy mayor? I wanna bring the same transparency and open communication to those county issues that you have come to expect from me at the local level. County Council is responsible for our landfill, our libraries, our ambulance services, our county roads, our health unit board, and more. Kingsville needs strong representation at that regional level. We need someone who's not gonna sit back and let two of our libraries close without putting up a fight. We need someone who's gonna ask the tough questions. We need someone who's gonna to get to the bottom of our ambulance service issues. And we need someone who's gonna work collaboratively with the representatives from the other municipalities. While I've been out on the campaign trail, I've had a lot of discussions with many of residents and there is one common theme. Kingsville is loved. You all love Kingsville. You wouldn't be here tonight if you didn't. I wanna thank you for allowing me the privilege of serving you and the town we love. And I hope you'll allow me to continue by supporting me as your next deputy mayor. Thank you.
Thank you, Kim. <laughs> Sam Zad. Good evening, everyone. For those here this evening, my name is Sam Zad. I would be honored to be elected as your next deputy mayor for the beautiful town of Kingsville. I've been married to my wife, Sharon, for 20 years. How are you tonight? Happy, sincere, comfortable, or perhaps sad, anxious, confused, or frustrated? If you're feeling the latter, it's most likely because you crave certainty, as do I. Certainty is often difficult to attain, but it's a lofty goal to ward off the shadow of anxiety and fear. Many of you felt threatened in some way since the advent of this pandemic three years ago. Some of you have asked me, will I be able to, be able to afford purchasing a home if I'm a first-time buyer? It's no surprise that the price of real estate has skyrocketed and presents a challenge. The Hegelian dialectic is a deceptive formula where the government creates the problem, then benefits by providing a solution. Affordable housing is one of them. Affordable housing is a euphemism for constructing apartment projects, projects that several council members mistakenly embrace. We must look to Detroit, Chicago, and suburbs of Toronto to see exactly how housing projects can devastate a city. Unlimited apartment buildings being constructed and funded with taxpayer money will invariably lead to a decrease in overall property values in middle to high income neighborhoods. Studies demonstrate that the incidence of crime rises with the migration of those moving from big cities to smaller towns in search of housing projects. When the government is your landlord, this arrangement allows politicians to further enrich themselves and impose control over tenants. Even partial ownership in a condominium, for example, where the government owns 30% carries a high risk. What happens if you default on a mortgage payment? Will the government then outright take over your home? One question I'm getting from municipal employees is, Will I have to take unlimited vaccines in order to keep my job? Not if I become deputy mayor. Keep in mind that I'm not against vaccines. All right. Many are effective. I'll remind the next town council that these experimental vaccines do not prevent transmission. Bodily autonomy and choice must be respected. Traffic. The last four years have seen little in relieving vehicle congestion. I'll leave it at that. Growth. 25% of Canadian small businesses declared bankruptcy after the pandemic. The government did this to them, not a tiny microorganism. As a business owner myself, I know how difficult staying afloat is, but it is possible. I will work with the new mayor and town council to develop multiple streams of revenue into our town by introducing eco-friendly manufacturing companies in a limited fashion and raising tourism to epic levels. This plan will increase local jobs as a consultant to many private businesses, I grew their sales and decreased unnecessary costs, all without recommending cutting staff. Next order, greenhouses. I'll touch this subject. Light emissions, odor, and building close to residential neighborhoods must be regulated. However, the radical That's agenda of Justin Trudeau much, and Sam. his agents- Thank you for your time. We appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you. Thank you. Gord Queen. Thank you. First of all, how many of you like a baseball game? Well, with this election, you get to pick who's on first, who's on second, and who's in the outfield. The reason I mentioned that is because even a baseball game has a rule book. When you go on in council, you have several rule books to follow. First, the Municipal Act, the Planning Act, Safe Water Drinking Act. Those are just a few of the examples. I'm not Sparky Anderson with a ball game, but I am Gord Queen, and I come to you with eight years experience as your deputy mayor. I'm married to Lee. We have two young adults, Harmony and Skyler, and two grandchildren, Emerald and Tucker. Well, each of us in Kingsville wants this town to be the best place, not only for our kids, but for our grandchildren. I did retire from Ontario Hydro with experience billing, collecting, customer service, and technical areas. Prior to that, I did spend a few years selling auto parts with my father and grandfather. Well, 
From the technical area, I received my OSET certification and I held that for 25 years. Why? It not only helped me with my hydro career, but it gave me an opportunity to work with planners and developers for new subdivisions. It gave me a great appreciation for our own development standards manual. Within this town, I have chaired many of the committees of council. I am now filling in for the mayor since he's not around. At the council, we can't tell you where to go to school. We can't tell you who to marry or what doctor to see. What we can do is advocate for more doctors in our community and advocate for more nurse practitioners. For the school issue, both Nelson and I go, did go to the school board and fight to maintain a high school within our community. Well, beyond that, at the county table, well, we've made motions to support active transportation, better roads. We had problems at Gossio North Public School and we tried to address that at the county. Just last night, I had my first library board meeting. Well, I couldn't make a motion there, but I certainly filed one, and that was to reopen the libraries in Cottom and in Ruthland, and that will be addressed at our next meeting. Well, I have supported youth sailing. I have supported access to the Dunkel by our seniors. For the community, I've chaired communities in blue. I've chaired committees of the whole, and basically, we all remember the old scout song at the campfire. It only takes a spark. You've got a council that has many sparks, many great ideas. I ask you to help us work together for the next term of council with your support. Thank you, Gord. Those were your candidates for Town of Kingsville Deputy Mayor. Now for the candidates running for mayor. The format has changed slightly. Each candidate will have four minutes to speak. First up, Dennis Rogers. Good evening, town of Kingsville. My name is Dennis Rogers. My wife Haley and I, we grew up in this town. Uh, we're proud Cobra and Cavalier grads. Don't worry, that grad year has a nine in front of it. We moved away, I got my uh, business degree at Wayne State. Shortly after that, we moved down to Ohio where I started with a large corporate hospitality company as assistant manager. When we left about six years later, I was in charge of two locations. I was responsible for multi-million dollars of sales and I had a staff of about 100 people. My goal, our goal, was always to come back to this community to raise our kids. So we did that in 2012. We bought a house and we started Greenheart. When I was away, I, I learned a tremendous amount of business, um, planning, fiscal planning, strategic planning, long-term planning, uh, responsibilities, budgets. But most important that I learned was leadership and people and support and listening and being able to elevate those around you to achieve a common goal. And you achieve that goal through results. That's why I think that I'm gonna be the best candidate for mayor. I've led delegations to council on behalf of small businesses and the arts community. I've led organizations who've brought federal and provincial tax dollars back to this community. You know, it's no secret that I don't have the municipal experience, but I think we've relied on municipal experience for too long. The experience we have is our farmers, our small businesses, our organizations, our residents. The leadership we need is a business-minded leader. I recognize how big the mayor's seat is, and I respect it very much, and I'm ready to be your public servant. I get asked, how can I balance Greenheart and still be the mayor? You know, I think some people don't realize the powerhouse of a wife that I have and how she's more than capable of running our business with the team that we have built. I'm gonna flash back to a story two years ago, March, 2020. We lost 85% of our sales. I laid off 14 people like that. When the tears were gone and the wine bottles were empty, we sat down and we got a plan. We were not gonna let our business fail. We were not gonna let this community fail. We opened up our side door and we fed this community through its darkest time. Flash forward to two years, where we're at right now, we've added two businesses to Greenheart 
that continue, continue to support this community. And that is why we need strong business-minded leadership. The thousands of doors that I've knocked on, and if I haven't seen you, I'm coming for you. There's been a main theme that I've seen. It's a plan. Where's our plan? Why don't we have a plan? Here's some stats for you. 2017, the town put together a strategic plan. It hasn't been updated. It lacks details. There's no tangible actions on there. We need to change that. 2018, we had an affordable housing study done. Hasn't been updated. So to me, you take the data that's already there. I'm not going to increase costs or put any, you have to put your hand in your pocket because we have the data. We have a count comprehensive land study, which we're going to be doing the end of this year into next, where it's going to give us the percentage of all our zoning. That's next year. So we're going to be able to take all that data, carve up our municipality, put together a plan for one, five, 10, and 20 years. We can't have a blueprint without a plan. We can't have a plan without a strong leader. And that's why you need to vote Dennis Rogers for mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Tamara Stump. Hello, Kingsville. I want to thank the organizers and all of you for staying this long and uh, listening to everything. Obviously, you're terribly interested, and that's what we hear on the campaign trail, and that's good. I was born and raised in Kingsville, and all of my detail is set out in a campaign pamphlet, which I believe you all have in your mailboxes, and if not, let me know. And I'm not going to repeat all that here. Uh, I believe uh, a full 50% of this room know me from birth. So uh, I want to tell you, um, why I want to be the mayor. And that is because um, I went through, uh, sorry, I went and got a law degree and that's the time I moved away from home. Otherwise I've lived here all my life. And when I was away, I knew I was coming back because this is the place where I would get married and have children because I can't think of raising them in any other place. And that's what I did. Um, I've lived here all my 65 years, except for about eight years when I was away to do uh, that. But when I got here and I started my law practice, I had more energy than I needed and I needed to contribute more. And what I did was decided that I'm going to run for town council. There's a major incident that caused that. And I served three terms, 11 years from 2003 to 2014, ending with the acclaimed deputy mayor. And when you're deputy mayor, you get to go to county council and you do the upper tier stuff. So I have lots of uh, background and practice at being at the council table. And I also do uh, many other boards and uh, have been in other elected positions as well. So I've uh, been giving my time in addition to my law practice for many years. But I didn't run in 2014 because I wanted to dedicate myself to my practice in order to be able to figure out how to retire. And I've now spent 41 years at it. And most of you have retired before 41 years. So I think that's a lot. And what I plan for is to uh, um, retire because I'm also tired of driving an hour back and forth to Windsor in the car two hours a day and losing precious time with family and friends who I realized were really missing during COVID. And in COVID, um, we didn't see each other a lot and that was, was really not great at all. And so I, it brought home to me that I wanted to be back in my community. So um, I want you to know that during those eight years, I wasn't like fooling around. I was still watching everything that was going on. I got politics in my blood from my father, and uh, I got hooked in 2003 so that what I do as uh, for leisure is I read planning. 
Uh, if I don't have to read something legal, I read planning. And um, I know how I know all the, I keep up on all the theories and the conversations and the new ideas. And I'm so excited that I want to embody them into our town. So what happened was about two years ago, I decided for sure I'm coming back. I saw things that, and listened and heard that there were things that weren't necessarily happening in an optimum way. Uh, I decided I would challenge for the major's job, mayor's job, and the reason I did was because I've got the skill set. I've been doing this for a while, I have a lot of skills, and I want to use them to do the best job for you as the mayor. And there's uh, one easy thing that I know, is that you all want to do have one job done for you. All of the complaints happen and the concerns happen around one job, which is this. And so... I want you to join me and tell me what you want, that you want to keep Kingsville beautiful. That's your time. Thank you very much. <laughs> Laura Lucher. Someone asked me tonight, uh, what was the thing that makes Kingsville most unique? My answer was the people. You guys sitting here all night through all of this, you prove that, so thank you so much for being here. I'm Laura Lucher, and I want to be your mayor. When preparing the speech and trying to decide what to say in four minutes, I decided there were probably three questions you would like answers to. Who am I? What do I stand for? And why should you elect me? So who am I? Well, getting my bachelor's degree in political science and then a master's degree in library science, I met my husband, Bill, who grew up on a nearby farm. We've been married for 30 years and have two grown children. We moved back to Kingsville in 2002, bought our home from a former town councillor, and raised our daughters here and never looked back. Throughout my 20 years in Kingsville, I've been an engaged citizen and an active volunteer. I served on the parent advisory councils of KPS and KDHS for 15 years became a founding member of the Art Society of Kingsville and a member of the Migration Festival Committee, which I now chair. I served on the board of the local chamber of commerce and was president of a local rotary club. I continue to volunteer for local charitable organizations and service clubs, along with local festivals and events. This spring, I was proud to organize the Kingsville Community for Ukraine fundraiser, a community event many of you contributed to that raised over $25,000. My professional career includes management roles in healthcare, social services, and education, where I demonstrated a commitment to exceptional customer service, team building, and thinking outside the box to achieve results. In 2018, I was elected to council and have participated on numerous boards and committees, serving as director and chair, including the BIA, IRCA, Planning Advisory, and Open Streets, and gained the opportunity to build relationships and learn about municipal government from the inside. What do I believe in? I believe in open and transparent government, keeping taxes low, investing in infrastructure, supporting small business and arts and culture, and protecting the environment. I think it's important to improve customer service and communication, to ensure good planning, to manage growth and development, leverage our waterfront, imp improve traffic, protect our natural and built resources, and maintain our small town character while addressing housing affordability and healthcare needs. Last question, why should you elect me? I'm the only mayoral candidate who's a member of the current council. I have a solid and thorough understanding of current issues and have developed positive relationships that will ensure a smooth transition and strong leadership over the next four years. I'm ready to work with higher levels of government to move Kingsville's agenda forward and I believe the most important role of the mayor is to provide positive leadership. Leadership to me is not about saying it, it's about doing it. A good leader is active, involved, and dedicated, is willing to do the work that needs to be done, and steps up to provide direction and guidance when necessary. A good leader is open and honest, takes responsibility for her actions, listens to opposing views, confronts challenges head on, lifts people up, and build strong teams and strong communities through teamwork and collaboration. I share your vision of a safe, friendly community where we can afford to live, work, play, raise a family, and retire. 
I presently have no other commitments or obligations that prevent me from dedicating 100% of my time and energy to the town of Kingsville and the position of mayor and working with you to achieve our vision. Together we're better, together we're stronger, and together we've got this. Thank you for your support. Thank you, Laura. Well, that concludes the event. Time. That's your time. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Uh, please tune into that Kingsville podcast, YouTube or podcast. Subscribe. You get all this and more. Uh, it'll be posted in the next day or so. Uh, we will be continuing our election coverage like the Kingsville news that we are. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Don't forget to vote in October. <laughs>